tennis injuries and how to come back stronger than ever. Hey there, Ramon Osa with you here, and today we're talking about how to come back from a tennis injury stronger than ever. You know, maybe you're dealing with an injury right now. Maybe you've got a knee issue, or your ankle's bothering you, or you've got a rotator cuff pain, or your lower back's not feeling good, or maybe you've got all the above. You know, I've been there and I've felt all those pains before and I've learned some pretty valuable lessons that I'm going to share with you in this video that has helped me get back onto the court and playing better than ever. Now normally we're on the court but I figure who can pass up a great opportunity to have a flower in the back. <laughs> Disclaimer, I don't know your specific injury and I'm not a doctor although my handwriting certainly qualifies me as a PhD. If you're dealing with any injury right now, especially if it's bad, go to a good doctor and get it checked out and do what they say. This video is about the key steps in the process to coming back from an injury and onto the court stronger than ever. And with that, here are five steps that you need to take if you're coming back to the court from an injury. Step one, rehab. The first thing you want to do is begin the rehabilitation process. This can be tough mentally and physically, I know, because when I was doing my master's program in violin, I actually got tennis elbow from playing too much violin. What a wimpy sounding injury, right? And it sucked because I couldn't do the two things that I liked most, which was tennis and violin. So after a couple of weeks of moping around, I decided I'm going to go to a doctor and get this checked out. And he sat me down and he said, your surrounding muscles are weak. You need to strengthen the muscles around your injury to support it, carefully, of course. So I started going to the gym, and I started actually developing these massive triceps that you see before you. And over time, the pain went away. Pretty cool. The good news is there's almost always something you can do immediately that will get you back on the court playing better than ever. And it might be as simple as just icing the injury or beginning the strengthening and lengthening process. So what should you do? I recommend researching your specific injury and whether that means going to a doctor or going on to Google and just typing in how to rehab tennis elbow and look for a reputable source. I'm talking about like WebMD or someone that you can trust and see what they recommend in beginning the rehab process. Just make sure that you're patient, listen to your body and take it one day at a time. And just think about how sweet it's going to be when you're rifling those winners past your buddy again. After you've rehabbed your injury, we're going to get into the most important part of the process, which is preventing future injury. Injury prevention is the single most important thing you can do to keep playing tennis at a high level for the rest of your life. It's all about preventing injury before it strikes. Kind of like telling your wife yes to her when she asks you to do something. Man, am I learning that one fast. But Ramon, how do you prevent injury? Well, one of the most important things you can do is correct imbalances in your body. Reason being the balance of active and stabilizing muscles is the key to reducing unnecessary strain on your muscles or joints or tendons. So like if you played a lot of tennis, for example, and you're right-handed, chances are the right side of your body might be a little bit stronger or a little more flexible than the left side, and that's when injuries start to happen. So we want to correct these imbalances. And what I like is a lot of single leg training and a lot of core stability work. I'm going to be doing a great video on the best exercises for tennis, so if you're interested in that, make sure to hit the subscribe button now. Also along the prevention side, I highly recommend picking up one of these puppies. They're like 20 or 30 bucks on Amazon, the foam roller. They do amazing things for activating your muscles before tennis and speeding up the recovery process afterwards. And it makes a really good tool for harassing your wife when she least expects it. Now the next thing for prevention is stretching. Obviously, if you're dealing with an injury, you're going to want to be careful with this one, but make sure you're incorporating at least a 15-minute stretching routine that you do every day that hits your major muscle groups. It's going to do wonders for not only how you feel every morning, but how you perform on the court. And finally for prevention is nutrition. Now, I'm not going to talk all crazy about this one, but just realize that you are what you eat. So if you're putting good, healthy foods into your body, and I mean stuff that really has one word in it, like vegetable <laughs> or some kind of food that you know is good for your body and your body responds well to it's going to do wonders for you on the tennis court so think of a good balance between good healthy fats lean protein and healthy carbohydrates you wouldn't put sugar water into a ferrari so you should put healthy foods into your body 
Hey, I rhymed one. Number three is really in prevention too, but I put it in its own category because it's so important. And that's having good technique. Good technique based on sound fundamentals and good biomechanics are going to do wonders for you in terms of injury prevention. Most players that I see that have tennis elbow or something going on with their knee are doing something technically that is hurting them. And there's no question that bad technique will get you an injury just as fast as your buddy calls your winner out. You see, having great technique will allow you to reduce wear and tear on your body and create effortless power while looking really cool. And in case you're thinking you can only learn new technique if you're seven years or younger, the good news is the latest brain research has shown that we're capable of creating new neurons in our brain until the day we die. Basically, that means you can always improve your technique. My advice here is put in the time that you need to improve your technique. It's gonna reduce wear and tear on your body, it's gonna create effortless power, and you're gonna look really cool. And luckily, that's what this channel is all about. So hit the subscribe button if you want new videos that come out every Tuesday that's gonna help you with your technique. Now, number four is a big one, and you wanna keep an eye on this one because otherwise you can get easily frustrated. And I'm talking about expectations. Look, if you were a 4.5 player six months ago or seven years ago, and you're coming back to tennis from an injury, it's really easy to get frustrated because you weren't at the level that you thought you would be at when you came back. Just realize it's gonna take you a little while to get back to the level you were at before. You're not gonna step on the court and immediately start playing like Federer. But it is like riding a bike in that the more you play, the more you're gonna feel the rhythm coming back to you and all of your skills coming back just like they were before you took the break. But my advice here is manage your expectations but keep your sights really high. You know, if you wanna be a 4.5 player again, that's fantastic but keep an eye on what you're expecting from yourself. So maybe the first day after coming back from a knee injury, you're all healed up, you got your rehab processes done, you're doing your prevention exercises, don't go out and play with your six foot four nephew that hits 110 mile an hour serve and play the best of three sets. Instead, make it your goal to go out for 20 minutes and play fun, pain-free tennis, and then see how you feel the next day. Maybe you want to ice your knee that day and just to, you know, really take care of it. And then the next time you go out a couple days later, stretch it to 30 minutes and then do the same thing. And then maybe 45 minutes the next week or the next two weeks. And then gradually build up your intensity level, your strength, and you'll find yourself playing at a level that you knew you could achieve all along. And my last tip for you to coming back from an injury and playing better than ever is spend some time visualizing yourself playing at the level that you want. It's gonna really motivate you to keep working to get on the court and stay on the court and play at the level that you wanna play at. And the latest research shows that your brain doesn't know the difference between what's vividly imagined and what's actually done. So you can hit winners in your brain all day long and it's gonna motivate you to get on the court, stay on the court, and it might even help that shot when you get back. And that's all there is to it. If you're coming back from an injury, remember, rehab your injury, start the prevention process, improve your technique, manage your expectations, and visualize yourself playing at a higher level than ever before. Thanks so much for watching this video. I had a great time making it for you as I enjoy making every video for you. Do me a favor, let me know in the comments below what injury you're dealing with and what you're gonna do to come back on the court stronger than ever. And if you want more videos like this that teach the fun in the fundamentals of tennis, make sure to click the subscribe button now and I come out with new videos every Tuesday for you. Thanks again for watching. Bye.